All right, we're back in, fresh day, on the roadster. Just dropped car off at the, the airport. That was sad, but it was also incredible to have him over here for the very small amount of time that we were able to do stuff with, but it was great to get him in the workshop. We had an amazing shop night. Yeah, I was able to kind of do a tour around. He was able to just hang out with Casey and I and Hudson, which was awesome for him, or Hudson to meet his uncle Carl, which was great. I still got the drive though. Want to get this thing done. Um, kind of, you know, I've just recently told or showed you that we do have it sitting. What I've just used is just two um, vice grips with a piece of angle just to kind of hold it in the position where I like it. What I've done, I got the um, seat. This is seat from Kyle's car and uh, I'm just using the dicky seat and I'm just trying to mock it up just so I can kind of get an idea where I'd like to sit with a bit of padding. Um, and then that way I know exactly where the wheel is going to go like this way. So, um, because we do need to make the nice little column drop for it. And I was just going to like fully make one from scratch, but I have this guy. This guy is rusty. It's toast. Um, not sure what year it's from. Someone in the comments will let me know. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut all this off. I'm going to use this mount and we are going to fix more stuff to it. Um, I'm going to make a little drop and then I'm going to make this kind of bolt into the bottom of the fuel tank. So there'll be a plug that'll kind of be welded to the bottom of the tank so I can still utilize the fuel in here. Um, but then this will kind of be fixed to the column itself and stay there, which is kind of the, the idea I'm going for. So I think it'll work. Uh, what I'm going to do is just cut the whole end of this off. We're going to sculpt this just so it's a nice piece round or a nice round piece, sorry. Um, and then once that's done, I'll actually add some metal to it and we'll try and make this thing look vintage and cast. We have our piece disconnected now, so I'm just gonna kind of cut all this, grind it back, make it look it's like it's not there, and then we can kind of use this piece in order to build off of it. Alright, so we got it in. I also have here a really nice original new old stock signal stat 700 indicator stock which is really cool um so that'll kind of be mounted either there or down near the drop so now that we have this piece in what we need to do is do some measurements to get it to work here and now what i'm thinking is i may um make some bungs and we can make like a little bracket that's going to sit up here and we can weld to it and then we'll try and make it all look like it was one piece all right so what we're kind of at the point of now is trying to obviously make some sort of really neat looking column drop. Um, I just found this piece and drilled two holes in it. These are two three eighths holes. And what we want to do is I'm going to trim this off. We're going to run a inch and three quarter or 44 mil hole saw through this bit. This is technically our steering column mount uh, where it is. Once we have that, then I can kind of sculpt it and then this will be our base that this will kind of sit on and then I will end up drilling two holes in the bottom of the tank. I'll fill these up. We're going to re-drill and tap these to a larger 3 8 bolt and then these will get welded into the bottom of the tank. Maybe even run like a 
run it through something so it kind of disperses the, the weight so we're not just relying on this weld here in that, that tank. Um, and then that'll all get mounted in the bottom. Two holes will hold everything and then we can kind of disassemble and move it all. It'll make a lot more sense once I kind of get the shape together. So what we're gonna do now is just run this over through the drill press. We'll drill this out and then I'll show you kind of what I'm thinking for sculpting it. And um, hopefully it'll come out, um, you know, relatively cool. Okay, so we have our hole drilled. This is our top bit, and essentially this is kind of what we're making. Uh, a simple kind of layout similar to this. So what I'd like to do is um, I'm gonna try and shape this a little bit uh, just to try and make it look a little bit nicer. So I'm just using a little die and we're just gonna scribe it make something look kind of slightly different, you know, and uh, see if we can come up with something kind of relatively, relatively cool. All right, so there we go. We kind of have a little shape, kind of dips in and then I'll kind of bring it around and then end it sort of there. Same with on that side, and then we probably will end up putting a little piece in here, I reckon, make it look a little bit nicer, fill it out. So what we're gonna do is try and cut this out. Um, probably best to use an angle grinder, being 10 mil thick, I believe this is. Yep. So let's clamp this to the table and see if we can kind of chop this out. Okay, so here's what we came up with. So I've beveled the edges and then we'll blend these right in and after we sandblast it, and I may even do a secret little kind of texturing to uh, make it look a bit more cast. And then once we cut this piece off here, this will allow us to put it there, round off these edges, blend everything in really nicely. I'll just take you over to the car and you can see that once it's in there, that's essentially what it's going to look like. So real simple, nothing too flash, maybe even enough one to put a little generator light on there.
So now we have our bit that will bolt to the bottom of the cowl or fuel tank. This is our piece that will fix to it. And I'm thinking that'll be the back side like that, front side, and it'll kind of sit like this. So we need to kind of mock this up so that I can tack it into place and then I can kind of figure out what bits are gonna get the blend and what bits aren't gonna get the blend and try and make this all look like one piece of cast. All right, so we got our base in the vise and what I wanna do is blend this edge right over. So I am gonna use that kind of tip I think I've shown you guys before when I was building the race car. And essentially what I'm doing is taking the old ones that we don't use anymore and then you cut four edges off like this, doesn't have to be too accurate. And then you're kind of left with these nice flimsy edges. Run it on a soft backing, the smaller one. And now you can kind of blend this edge and it's got enough flex where it won't actually cut into the material. So let's go over here. I'll line this up, begin to blend this. And you can see it just rolls it right over. Okay, so here is, here's what we got so far. Got our nice piece, got a really nice rolled edge all the way around. And basically, this is gonna be the front. This is gonna weld like that, super simple. And then this will end up welding to the actual sleeve. And we got this wicked little old glass light as like an accessory light. I got these from my mate Mike Rock back home in Canada um, years ago. Got quite a few of them and um, I think I found a, a home for one. So I was thinking maybe I'll drill a hole through this. Gonna have a nice little glass red light there for maybe a warning light for something or maybe a high beam or you know something kind of cool. Just kind of help stress that little area up there. So I think that's what I'll do. So I found the center just going to run a uh, center punch and then we are going to drill a hole straight through this, slide this bad boy in there. Okay, so here's our little hole, and then here's our really cool little light. So it's just kind of like an old glass light. That looks really cool. So I think it should look quite neat set into place like that. And then we'll have our top plate on there. So what we need to do is hold this all into place. I'll get in there with the MIG, I'll tack it all, remove it, weld it, blend it, fit it. All right, so I got you set up in here. Hopefully you can kind of see. I'm just gonna hold it up, try and tack it into place without burning myself too much. 
and um, then we can kind of pull it out and weld it. So what I need to do is get this straight up and down where I like it and then we will kind of try and slide this guy up behind. Try and get everything kind of even. I want it to sit even with the cowl as well. That's probably right where I like it. I'm kind of sort of trying to hold it into place. What I'll do is just tack this here. Okay, so that is now mounted into place, tacked in, and what I'll do is just remove the shaft, the steering column, we'll pull that piece off, and then we're gonna weld it up. So now we just need to disassemble this. Can't wait to polish the Bakelite on this and just leave the rest kind of nice and dirty. Sweaty. Someone said that the other day when they looked at the car. They go, you're making a nice sweaty looking car. So yeah, I like that. So now we're gonna slide this piece off. We're gonna re-weld all this up. We're gonna clean it, blend it, make it all look like one piece, and then we're gonna stick this back in. All right, so here it is. So we got, this is the old bit that we cut off of. So that's originally what it looked like. And then we cut the old damaged bit off, rounded it off, and then we made our little bit there. So now we gotta blend all this together. So we need to weld it all, blend it, make it all look like one piece. So we're gonna stick it in here. I'm gonna warm up the TIG welder and we're gonna get to work. All right, so we got it set up in the vise here and I'm just gonna run along and try and tack this into place as much as we can.
Okay, so here we have it so far. This is the, um, it's kind of blended in. I did fully TIG weld it and then I've actually kind of chased over it with a bit of silicon bronze. Um, you don't really need necessarily to use the silicon bronze and I could have probably done without it. Um, it is just a softer compound that's easier to blend. So if you're not worried about it structurally, you can kind of put it in there and, and it works um, kind of both ways. So what I'm gonna do now is just run this through the sandblaster and just kind of sandblast it all and see what it looks like and then we'll, uh, we'll end up putting this piece back in. So there you have it. Let's go put it in the sandblaster. So, we have this thing. I just pulled it out of the sandblaster. It looks pretty cool. I could spend a little bit more time on it making it perfect, but everything on this is not perfect. And we were just toying with the idea of actually powder coating this in uh, a core 10 finish. And I've seen it, Liam, across the street. Um, he does the uh, balustrades and he does a core 10 powder coating finish on them and it looks amazing. Almost looks like the outside of this body. So I may even give it a little crack because you don't really see a whole lot of this and I think it might be really cool to see what it would look like. So anyways, this is kind of what we're after so far. We have our nice little bit. Everything's blended really nicely. Um, and then what we're gonna do is install it. We'll pop the light in and see what this thing looks like. So that looks pretty dang cool. Hopefully it'll look nice once it's all blended and painted. Steering shaft is in there. I will just throw the bearing in just so we have everything kind of set where it's supposed to. Um, and then basically what I'll do when we go to kind of remove the body is I will put that plate with the two bungs and that will be the way that we mount this to the bottom of the cowl. So once this is up in place, this is essentially what it's going to look like. So something just like that. So you can kind of see, and this here, um, the old rod that used to pass through here and go through the firewall, I'm going to leave this. And what I can do with that is the wiring loom for the signal stock 700, signal stat. Um, this wiring loom, once I replace it with new wires or new um, cloth wrapped wires, they can actually go up and pass through just like this underneath here. You can see that this will actually pass up and through there and then that will kind of keep it off the column, which will be a really neat idea for when we do the wiring. So. You know, kind of nice to be able to like utilize certain little bits and pieces. Um, again, we will just quickly put this on here. I'm unsure whereabouts it's going to sit, if I'll keep it like up close to the wheel or if I'll kind of drop it down next to the column. Um, I don't really know what it's going to sit. I might just chop that off so you can kind of see it. And then we got the, the signal stat there. And then the good, the, the bonus bit, so I'm unsure what this will be when we put it in. Maybe um, generator light or um, high beam light, like I said. Legally in Australia, your high beam is supposed to be blue, but maybe we could get away with a red one. But I think this stuck in there looks the bee's knees. That looks bloody cool. And then if I stick this behind, you can kind of see what it's going to look like once it's on. I even be able to get the iPhone light on better, but there you go. Kind of get a good idea what it's going to look like, which would be really cool. So that'll light up for, for something. This one over here, I may leave um, and actually put a gauge in there. We'll, we'll just see how we go with that. But let's just kind of loosely stick everything on here. We're going to see what this looks like. Okay, so wheels on. 
That's basically where it's going to sit. We got a nice gap behind here for the column, which is a bonus. And then we can kind of play around with where that indicators stock's going to go. Maybe even closer. Something like that might look okay. We have a column drop that I want to try and powder coat and see if this will look any good. All right, first time powder coating for all you mad dog powder coaters out there. Don't give me shit for not doing it properly because I don't really know what I'm doing. But we just did a few test pieces and it came all right. So here we go, we got our piece. It's nice and clean. I just cleaned everything. I've just put a bit of this aluminum foil in there. Um, and what I'm gonna do is put the powder on and then I'm just gonna poke that out and hopefully not a lot will get inside there where it's gonna attach to the steering column. So we have our powder in our powder coating gun and we have the earth or positive current that needs to go through it right here. So I'm gonna stick this on to here. And hope, oh, shiza. Hopefully I can kind of do this without it, without it touching anywhere. And then I can pull it off and then we can hang the whole lot in there. So I'm gonna get this on. Just wanna make sure. Okay, and apparently you wanna dust it. Last time I tried, I, I put a lot too much on. So this is me trying to apply it very lightly. Ooh, it's coming out like a African Byzanchi. Shiza. Oh, not very good at this. I haven't perfected this, the trigger on the gun yet. Just making sure the wire's not touching anything. I'm pretty happy with the way this looks. Let's get that little bit where it touched. All right, I think that we have it relatively good there. We're gonna pull this off. We're gonna try and poke this out without hitting anything. Should probably go out the back side. Did it touch it? Nope, perfect. Okay, so there we have our powder and we're gonna stick it straight in the oven, wait for it to do its thing and then come and check out what it looks like. In the oven we go. All right, I think we're finished. Do the honors. Oh! It's warm. Don't drop it. Don't drop it. Nice. Take it outside and have a real look at it once it's cooled down. Well, you can kind of see it in the sun. It looks pretty damn cool. It's got a lot of texture to it, which is really neat. All right, so I was playing around with some samples, trying to like kind of darken them a little bit. I don't know, make them look weird and aged. That was the antique bronze. Um, and then we played around with using some black and some antique bronze and it kind of gave a pretty neat effect as well. But realistically, the core tan was the go. I got excited. We made it. It's still warm. It looks great. This is kind of the stock piece that would have been cut off there. So it's not much different really. So I think the, the biggest thing I want to do right now is, is, um, Stick our little light in there just to see what it's gonna look like. Oh yeah, I think we need to reinstall this thing right now. Hopefully that light's not too harsh on it, but that looks awesome. I'm just gonna grab my little light. Yeah, I'm stoked. Like, to be honest, I'm not a massive, like I've mentioned before, like I'm not very experienced with, with powder coating. I never really do it because I've always just had the booth to paint stuff, but it looks really cool and it's given it like a texture you know, like it matches the, the indicator stock. It looks, you know, everything's kind of, I'm not one for fake patina is what I'm trying to say. And this was, I was kind of like a, mm, I don't know, but I, I think it looks really cool. It almost looks like a piece of the car that is supposed to be there 
and looks like it came factory with this Model A body. So I think it's just wicked. I think it looks really, really neat and just matches with everything. So I think if we, ooh, we won't put on the party lights. If we stick this behind it though. So there you go. So that you'll have a really cool idea what that's gonna look like. So if the generator fails for some reason or alternator, the power master, then this would light up, which would be really cool. Or maybe it'll be for the high beam switch, I'm sure. But I think that'll look really neat. But I'm happy I tried it. You know, it doesn't have to stay there. If I, if I don't like it or wanna try and do something different, I can always do that. But I'm really happy with the way this column drop has set up. Everything looks proportionally well. You know, when it comes to the point of like all the finishing touches, I got a lot of really cool ideas. I got these old, these old cast jewels. They got a glass light in them. And these probably would have been like a truck accessory from way back in the day or something like that. But I'm thinking, you know, somewhere this is gonna sit as well. They got the really nice lights in them. So maybe that'll be for some sort of Maybe if I got my fog light on or something like that. Also, um, we just wanted to mention that we are bringing out a video, just a short little clip um, next week that's gonna basically kind of outline and show our members thing. Um, we have kind of mentioned it several times. We had two different membership um, things that you could purchase and uh, we're just gonna kind of narrow it down to one, simplify it. And we have some really cool goodies um, for members that do join in. Um, we got some special little tags and stuff made that we're really excited to show. We haven't even t told anyone about them yet. Make sure you guys look out next week. We'll drop a little video and we'll give you all the information you need on that. So yeah, thank you very much everybody. Thank you for your support. Again, I never say it enough, but seriously, we do this for you guys. It's, uh, it's, it's just a blast to be able to create these fun things, being able to work on my dream car and film it and show you guys and uh, hopefully you guys learn a few tips and tricks and um, you know, I learned just as much from you guys as well. So yeah, awesome time. Mm -hmm.